What's up guys, today I'm going to be giving you a very quick breakdown of how I did the mix for the Alpha Wolf video. For those of you who don't already know, I do mix all of my sets live on my Twitch channel and I do have a backlog of all of the times I did mix streams in the past. So feel free to give me a follow on there and come check out a mix stream sometime. So when it comes to drums, the main thing that's different about the way I mix live recordings versus like studio recordings is I don't really use gating a whole lot. I've run into issues in the past where I'll set a noise gate and there's just like one part of the set where the gate was too strict and it just kind of ruins the whole thing. Thing for me and I'm kind of in a spot where I need to set all of my plugins where it's just going to work for the whole set. So my kick EQ looks a little something like this and here's a before and after. You will notice that it does lose a little bit of its punch but that is because I do have a kick out mic to work with so I don't have to worry too much about taking out all the low end through my kick in mic. So the main thing you'll see here is I am boosting a little bit more of the top end and then I'm also hitting it with a little bit of compression right here. And like I said, I do have a kick out mic to work with, which is not always the case, but in terms of this tour, they brought a lot of equipment with them. Usually when I'm just using venue provided equipment, it's just like one mic for kick, one snare, tom and tom, and then all the cymbals just come from the vocal mics, honestly. But the kick out mic is gonna provide us with all that extra oomph we need here. I am going to compress that low end a little bit, just so that I have an equal amount of low end, no matter how hard the kick is gonna get hit. And then I do have a gate on top of that just to control exactly how long the low end of the kick rings out for. When it's time for me to do the snare, I try to find a spot somewhere in the set where there's some light hits, some heavy hits. Usually it's going to be ghost notes and a breakdown or a huge fill. In this case, I do have a snare top that sounds really, really good without much being done to it. So I don't have to go too crazy on processing here. I do have just a little bit of a boost on the like 200 hertz area, which is very common to make a snare have a little bit more punch to it. And then I just kind of selectively pick frequencies at the top to give it a little bit more stick definition. And like I said, this isn't always the case, but I was lucky enough to have a snare bottom on this session. And that's really going to help even more when it comes to those ghost notes or fast played sections because the snare wires are going to make sure it always comes through. I do have a little bit of an expander on it because sometimes the kick bleed can get kind of crazy underneath. When it comes to the snare bottom mic, I'm not doing a whole lot here. I am cutting out the bottom end because I don't want what I did on the top to interfere with anything I'm doing on the bottom. So if I have too much low end on the bottom, it's just going to sound overly boomy. And then I'm pretty much boosting everything from 5K up to give it a little bit more snap and clarity. There is one final compressor that the snare goes through before it's at the final point of the mix. I really do like the LA-2A for snare. It does make it sound a little bit punchier and it kind of smooths it out in a nice way where those snare wires don't sound so harsh anymore. I'll go over the bass very quickly. I pretty much always do the same thing with any band that's like this. I want to separate the low end of the bass out from the clanky high end of the bass. My EQ for the low end of the bass looks like this. Versus the top end of the bass, which looks a little something like this. I have a little bit of compression on the low end, just enough so that no matter what note is getting played, it's around the same volume. But then as far as the amount of compression I do to the top end of the bass, I go a little bit more intense with this one. And then here's what it sounds once I bring the low end of the bass back in with it. When it comes to the guitars, if you listen to them by themselves, they're actually very muddy, which isn't a bad thing. It essentially means that they're going to be able to be EQ'd to taste in any room that they play in. It is worth noting, though, that it's good that they didn't filter their guitars before they went to the PA system because those low notes do affect what we're hearing in the higher end notes a lot more. So you never want to send your guitars too thin, but you do have to sometimes be careful if you are playing through a cab that you're not overloading the microphone with low end. In this case, because they're using a direct out, they can send as much low end as they need to and just let their front of house engineer filter it out to taste. So here's the two guitar tracks with and without their respective EQs.
I do send both guitar tracks through a little bit of compression just to even it out. And then those two guitars go to a bus together where I do a little bit more EQ to it just to kind of adjust it to taste to everything else. So here's that EQ right here. And just to show the difference it makes, here's the full mix with and without that guitar EQ on it. For vocals, my vocal chain's pretty consistent no matter what vocalist I'm working with. It's not going to be too different other than what frequencies I choose to boost and maybe how much compression is needed to level everything out for them. Depending on the vocalist, I'll run one or two more compressors after it. In this case, I just have a compressor that kind of brings everything up more in terms of presence and then also make sure his highs and his occasional lows do have the same volume to them. So at most, it's doing about 6 dB of gain reduction, but then when it's time for him to do his lows, it's only hitting about 2 or 3 gain reduction, so that's really evening it out the way I want it to, and then all I have to do after that is send it to a limiter. That limiter is essentially just going to be the volume that I want him to be at the entire set, but usually I hit the limiter loud enough and hard enough that it's going to add a little bit of top-end distortion, just enough to add a little bit more grit to the vocals. So without overcomplicating things, that's essentially the way I mix the Alpha Wolf set. The entire process usually takes me about two to three hours, and like I said, I always do the entire mix process on my Twitch channel. I do have this mix plus a dozen others saved on that channel already, and I do try to do a mix stream every single week. Either way, I appreciate you guys and your continued support. I have another video coming up very, very soon, which I will be mixing in the next night or two. So feel free to check that out, and I will see you guys with a new video later this week.